everybody. This is Andrew Hunziker with Dope CFO. I'm super excited about today's show. We are, we're calling this, What Are Cannabis Entrepreneurs Really Looking For in Accountant? My guest is Tina Begay. Um, she is an MBA in Northwestern Montana. She's had her own business, Redtail Accounting, for quite some time, as well as, as being a professor at a college in the Northwest. Um, and so she's got a lot of great background. Tina, with that, why don't I just go ahead and welcome you and, and give us a little more um, just background about, about where you live and, and how you got into accounting to start with. Sure, thanks for that. Um, I started my business about in 2010 and I started, a, a, interestingly, a virtual bookkeeping business. And I had about a couple of clients and they were nonprofits. And that's when, you know, virtual bookkeeping wasn't a thing. <laughs> and, and I just, um, you know, out of the rural area that I live in, you know, I live in Montana. And so to get to anywhere, we always tease it's about, you know, three hours. <laughs> and so I had a lot of, um, I was involved in a group and then I seen there was a need to serve that, that industry. And so I kind of started that um, in the beginning as a virtual deal. And then I, you know, started working and doing other, um, and I've always done that as a side hustle. And then when I got to, um, you know, I, I've been teaching at a tribal college for about 10 years. And then when I, um, you know, when you do that, it's hard work. And yeah. I decided that I wanted to, you know, do something else. And I had quit my job in 2019 at the end of it. And I kind of pouted for a while. <laughs> and, and then I said, I am going to do stuff that I love. And so I love um, financial management, working with numbers. And so I decided I was going to take my business to the next level. And I wanted to add, um, you know, really di diversify my clients and not rely on just one industry. And I was um, at my sister's house kind of pouting around and I found you, um, interestingly, I don't, on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> and I um, checked it out and I thought, wow, this, this is very interesting. And then I just took the plunge. And since then I've, you know, my life has changed, you know, for the better. That's awesome. And, and so to highlight right off the bat, I mean, think about that in Northwest Montana in the middle of nowhere and still building a successful business on the in the college. Were you teaching business classes or financial or accounting or all of the above? Yeah, when you're um, when you're a tribal college instructor, you teach, you know, everything from intro to business to finance. And of course, um, I gravitate towards financial management. I don't have like a, a CPA or, you know, uh, I guess a certificate in that field, but wherever I've worked, that's what I've managed. Um, you know, I've worked for a national nonprofit. I um, worked in the business office at a tribal college. And so I've always loved numbers and, and gravitated towards that. And so my teaching ability, um, has helped me tremendously in this field. Well, and I was going to say exactly that. So having that broad business financial education along with your accounting, I have found so many of these business owners, they, you know, in many industries, you find business owners that are super mature and they've got a great business background in the cannabis CBD space you'll often find business owners that are 23 years old and don't have any experience and they need, they need more than an accountant and a CFO. They need a teacher and they need someone to help them every step of the way. So I think it's an amazing skill set. So if you're a cannabis business owner out there, I would encourage you definitely to reach out, out to Tina as well. Um, and so what, what are some of the, the biggest complaints you've heard as you've been out there talking to cannabis business owners? What are their, kind of their, their pain points that you're seeing? Um, you know, I, I, when I was thinking of this, I, I've only had maybe a couple there, you know, they're not my clients, but I'm just, you know, interacting with them. A, a couple, you know, were kind of angry at the whole, like, 
system of not being treated like a typical farmer, you know, that kind of thing. Um, just angry at the, you know, tax system, um, not willing, kind of having a, a bad attitude about it and trying to find ways to get around it. I've only seen that with a couple people. And, you know, honestly, when you say, you know, there's sometimes you get, you know, just something tells you don't, don't do this. And so I can kind of um, decide when I'm talking to um, cannabis business people, kind of where they're at. Most of the time I can, um, you know, ease them into, you know, being 100% compliant, following the law, those kinds of things. So the biggest complaint though, at aside from, you know, paying taxes, because most Americans, we, everyone yeah. hates paying taxes. Yeah. And it's my job um, as a, as a, as a bookkeeper and accounting person is to minimize your tax liability in a, in a legal way and, and to know the law. And so um, I would say my second, you know, or not even really second, but the biggest challenge is is both my clients now are, are young people and they know a lot about cannabis. They know, they know the um, possibility of it. They know, you know, all of the laws, they've, you know, researched it, they've, they've done it. What they don't know is accounting and they, they really don't have the time to know that. Um, they want to, but they, they're more focused on the, on the uh, producing side of it and delivering a product and a, you know, that kind of thing. And so I feel like it's my job to make sure that I'm tracking all of their um, transactions, you know, in a timely manner and communicating with them. So one of the things I feel like with um, cannabis business people is they're very, um, they want to have a person in their office so that they can, you know, turn around and look at them. And most people want that in every industry I, I work in. You know, you want that. But the reality is, is we live in a different world today that that's just not possible. Yeah. Even you know, we're ha a lot of industries are having that problem. So what I do is I, um, you know, I just when we were caught when we were talking here, one of them just FaceTime me. And um, I make myself available to my clients through FaceTime just so they can, you know, see. when you're talking money, they want that security that yeah, they can see your you. face. And so I do that a lot. I do a lot of Zooms or, or whatever platform they, they use, you know, like GoToMeeting and Google Meets. So um, whatever they're well, comfortable using. But I think that just seeing the person and it eases their mind. So that you made so many great points there. Um, I think at the end of the day, you know, I've talked a lot about this. Some they, I say the owner, they they wish that we were right there next to them or whatever. But what they really want deep down at the end of the day, they they want to know they've got good books and records. They want to know their taxes are minimized correctly. They want to know that the and they've got world class reporting. All those things that we can provide them. In, in dope CFO, but then you're adding that extra layer by being available on FaceTime or whatever platform they use um, and not just being set in your ways and being able to be in front of them to give them that, that comfort that you're there with them um, as well. Are you, have you worked, you mentioned the tribe is, and I don't know if the, the tribe itself has started any cannabis businesses or any other locations on have you gone down that road yet with them um i have not i don't have a tribe um tribe per se client but you know i want to that's a goal of mine to be able to serve tribes and that's a whole different ball game that um you know you think having dealing with cannabis just regular cannabis people in and the whole federal government and the state laws you know that's a that's a chore um, adding a tribe into this yeah. mix is a whole different ball game. And because we have a government to government relationship with uh, the United States and the United States has used tri uh, states as a mechanism to, to be able to do cannabis in, in our country. Um, 
but what happens to Native American tribes that want to do this? Because we, um, you know, oftentimes you, you either have to have a compact with the state or you have to follow some kind of state law. And most tribes will feel like that's um, a weakening of their sovereignty. And, and so they, they want to be able to um, do cannabis without going through the state. Um, but some have chosen just to go out ahead and do a compact or do follow state law. And, and so it, I, I have, you know, dedicated the past two years to learning about all of those laws and how it works. Um, and so, you know, my goal is to have, get a tribe that's producing, you know, having to grow in the whole operation. Um, but I feel like there's not you know, there's a few that are doing it and a few are that are wanting to get into it. And so they have been reaching out to me asking my expertise. Um, they do want like cash flow projections. And um, so I'm able to kind of give them a, a, an idea um, because they have other people approaching them to say, hey, we're going to, you know, basically get invest in your business at this dollar amount. We'll give you the package deal. And, but they don't have any um, reference of to like, how much does this kind of operation bring in? Yeah. Am I going to have enough cash flow? And so by um, me just kind of guiding them and giving them some resource materials to be able to do that. No, that's hugely helpful. And just just make sure you don't give them too much free stuff until you get them hired on as a, a client. <laughs> um, but I think that's awesome that you're getting. Yeah, and I do not give free stuff. So that's one thing that I've learned um, being in this program. I'm a servant person at heart, and I'm also a social entrepreneur. But in this business, the value of that is so key. and um, I'm, I'm value. I have value. And so when I give, like I, I'm working with a, a tribe here in Montana and um, I, I gave the cash flow projections, but I did in a PDF. I didn't like give yeah. formulas and I kind of just gave a snapshot of it. I didn't give the whole thing because I you agree. don't want to do that. You, you want to protect what you have as um good information and you want someone to you know pay for that yeah and it just sets up a good tone right off the bat because because uh, yeah boy howdy will in any state <laughs> or any organization <laughs> these people will try to get everything they can out of you for free and their attorneys too um mm -hmm. so that's great advice what um let me ask you this what are your biggest tips or challenges for time management and keeping client books organized because i know that's another big challenge in this industry yeah, right now it's, you know, I have me and I have a, a, a couple part-time people on my staff. Um, I am a vampire, so I like to work at night and um, I, I do deep work then. <laughs> um, and so I just have, I've always been a very meticulous person and really on top of things. And so you know, I have a rule by the 10th of the next month, you know, to have everybody's books balanced awesome. and everything, you know, tied out. And when I first started your, your program here, I remember, I can't remember what part it was in, but you had said, you know, you have just a, a like a, a notebook on your table and, a, and a, everything else is, you know, put away by the end of the week. And so I kind of live my life like that. I, I make sure that I've cleared up everything. Every All loose ends are tied up. And I clean my desk off and clean out my in basket and just be really on top of um, data because the client wants the data. They want to be able to get yeah. on their software program and run a report or have you run a report and get it to them. And it has you know up-to-date information on it. You don't want to be two months behind. No, I totally agree. And I love to hear that, how, how, and business owners listening, see how, how organized um, Tina is, because it's a huge, huge thing. And 
you know, you everyone sometimes thinks, oh, CPAs or whoever, they're all organized. It's totally untrue. There, so letters behind your name do not mean you're organized and meticulous. And so that's where, um, again, it's that value you bring to those owners. Um, and it's just, it's very, very important in this niche to stay organized and on top of things. We've seen the IRS find people, you know, a hundred grand almost just for sloppy record keeping. So very, very important for the clients and for our clients in here. What, let me switch modes here a minute. What is the most common error made, made among accounting professionals who are jumping in um, to this industry? Maybe they've never been in cannabis before. I, I, I'll share this. And I, I thought a lot about this. Um, you know, when I first started in this program, you know, the first year I didn't, I really didn't do anything other than kind of read and I had a lot of other things going on in my life. But um, the mistake I made, I think, is I was working and focusing too much on cannabis and laws and just the, the, the prospect of it, the green rush and <laughs> You know that kind of thing and I was and I you know although you should know that kind of stuff and you should be you know educated on it and be up to date on the you know things like that but I feel like more so you should be um, spending time on your business like how are you going to record your um, transactions how are you going to bill um, what kind of system are you going to organization system are you going to use? Um, how are you going to um, train basically CEOs how to use how to because they're used to most of them are used to, you know, the old fashioned way of, of um, filing a receipt in a file. Yeah. Um, some of them don't have scanning ability, you know, are there not, you know, I'll get I'll get all kinds of scans that are like upside down <laughs> parts are taken you know cut off I'm missing <laughs> and so um just really focusing on accounting not cannabis because um cannabis honestly is just like any other business it doesn't matter it, it the only really the only thing is you don't get to take those extra business expenses <laughs> but other than that it's accounting is accounting and so to focus really on that, I feel like that's kind of slowed me down because I was more focused in, on the kind of, you know, like, I guess I was more focused on if I was a, running a, a, a cannabis store or something, but yeah. I'm like, leave that to the person that's running that business. They're, they're good at that and they know all the laws they are, they, they should um, but I'm going to focus on the accounting side of it and the organization side of business. Yeah, and keeping them, that's great points, and, and just letting them know we can help put internal controls, we can help make sure they're doing cycle counts and daily cash counts and making sure their systems are tied out. And, yeah, and they don't get support. that. They don't get <laughs> that until you show them, you know, tying those out. And it's like any other program that you use when you're taking in money. And then you tie it out to something else, even if it's not cannabis, your, your accounting records have to match your reporting records and they have to be within a certain, you know, you wouldn't, yeah, yeah it's just, and to be making sure that your, your client, mm -hmm. um, you know, honestly, they, some of them have taken me like six months to get them to the point where they're at and, and they, you know, it's patients. It's um, working with them. And then when they actually do see how come you're asking for that information, then they start, oh, I want, I want to give it to you sooner or, you know, I want to make this better. How can I do this? Well, so I feel like focusing on those areas are better than like the whole cannabis industry. Well, that and, and that really you started to answer already my next question about what advice do you have for creating strong working relationships with your clients? You seem to be really good at that. So, yeah, let us know about, about having that patience and really teaching. It's, I can just hear your teaching flowing over <laughs> to them as opposed to just saying, hey, you need to do this and that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I'm, um, you know, I work with lots of different types of people. So in this um, industry, you don't have like a particular um 
personality. They're very diverse. And so um, just simple things like teaching them. I, I kind of teach them like, you know, the, the cloud, the, the perpetual data room, you know, having them own it and then having them, um, I have to like get online and teach them how to do that. And then how do you add me and how do you add your employees or the bookkeeper and how do you um, save items in there? And so just being really patient and tolerant with them because, you know, some of them are like when I'll go, okay, let's set up a Google workplace for your staff. And then we're gonna set up a folder and they're like, how do I get there now? And I'll be like, you go to your email and then I'll be like, see these little squares at the top, <laughs> you yeah. click on that, you know, like, and just being really, you know, and you have to do it over and over because they're used to, you know, emailing you everything instead of a, a different kind of system. But once you um, kind of just be patient with them and tell them how to do it. I also do a lot of um, like, policies and procedures, financial policies and procedures, having it on, I always say having it written on paper on purpose. And <laughs> so that people um, follow it. You don't have to keep telling everybody the rule. It's on paper. Um, employee manuals, because these are new entrepreneurs. They're just like, I'm going out and doing this. And then all of a sudden they're like, they happen to hire people. And they're like, oh, I don't even have a, a manual. And I'm, I, I caution them. I'm like, you, you shouldn't hire people unless you have them sign a, a, a that they've read your handbook um, and it has, you know, your state laws in it. Um, I do telecommuting agreements. So now more than ever, you know, they have employees that are, are you know, working from home and how do you want that to look? You know, how are you going to allow that to happen? And, you know, that doesn't mean because you work from home, you can do whatever and then just check in here and there. Well, um, from everything I'm hearing, I mean, you are giving, you're like doing way above and beyond normal accounting. You're like doing accounting and bookkeeping, but also education and training and helping them with so many things. And, and hopefully another idea of my program, as you're adding that, just a ton of value to these people that I can guarantee if you were not there for them, they would probably have some random person that was not doing any of this. Uh, so make sure you get testimonials or referrals, or if, if they're a grower, find out who their dispensaries are, because that can, that can lead you to the next wave of, of clients as well. And mm -hmm. um, the, a couple more questions were, were, um, hitting hitting about 30 minutes and I like to keep these are kind of in that range so that that's awesome what what has been your experience so far just with dope CFO and kind of working with me in the program mm -hmm. well um you know I'm always a very hesitant person and I like to I'm a, a planner you know I I don't I don't like risk <laughs> and, and um when I you know saw your program you know I I took the leap of faith and um, what I like most about your program though, is it gave, it gave me the, the working papers to have the confidence to realize, you know, what I, the skills that I already have, and then to be able to be confident to portray that to my clients. And so just to even like the engagement letter, the, you know, the, the counting of, you know, your product, your um, cost accounting program, you know, I never did cost accounting before. And so learning that way really helped me. Um, your, awesome. your white paper on how to get clients fast has absolutely changed my life. <laughs> uh, I know it's not your paper, but just introducing it to me. Um, I never thought about uh, my life being like, I always thought of a, an hourly person, I guess. And so oh, now can. I'm really confident about um, just saying, you know, I, I charge what a percentage of revenue and I'm very, you know, and I have a minimum fee and, you know, I'm just confident about it and I, I feel good about it. Um, That's yeah. awesome. Um, well, well, glad that that everything is going well. Um, and yeah, like that. So one example of something we have in the program is a price quoting tool. And I try to, 
yeah, that we are, we're going to deliver value to that owner and we're going to get paid well for it. And then we use gauges of things like revenue, complexity, number of entities to price um, every client differently. It may be a range, but um, we're going to look at all those key factors for sure. Um, let us wrap up with, is there any final, is there anything we missed or final words that you want to tell our listeners, whether that could be accountants or dispensary or farm owners out there? And then also the easiest way to find you as well. And we'll put links to that in the show notes too. Okay. Um, my final thoughts would be that for anyone, you know, wanting to do this program, um, you know, it the materials can be adapted. Um, you know, they're designed for cannabis, but, you know, I use them in my, I use them on my nonprofit side of my business and it has changed that business as well. You know, I, I was an hourly type of person. I, I wrote a letter to my current contacts at the time and said, I'm going to a, a, a percentage of revenue. And if you want to, you know, leave me, that's fine. And, you know, they all stayed. And, and so I, I, I feel like you can use that your materials for it's just accounting, you know, for any type of industry. Um, how people can get a hold of me is I'm on LinkedIn. You can uh, search me and my contact information is on there. On there. And we'll put that in our link to our show notes as well. Um, it's been so amazing to have you. Um, and that's just exactly right about, about what all you're saying and, and good advice to those people. And really, at the end of the day, yeah, we've tailored all these tools to cannabis. But at the end of the day, whether we're building a perpetual data room or a month in tie system or a permanent audit trail or better reporting, those things apply to every company, big or small. Um, that's what we, we always want to do is that great accounting. So it was so awesome to have you on the show today. Um, I just think you're going to add so much value to so many clients. And um, even though you're up there in remote Montana, it's in this world, people can <laughs> find you anywhere. And, and I think one thing, one benefit that's come out of COVID is that a lot of business owners are like, it's just a fact of life. People are, you know, in the old world, yeah, we drive across town and waste gasoline to go meet people. But now it's like, you know what, we can, you know, me and you've been talking here for 30 minutes and would it have been a little different if we were in the same room? Yes, but it's, we're still, this is a close second place. So, um, well, anyway, great to have you and we will, we'll put all that out there and um, I'm sure this is going to educate a lot of people. Awesome. Thank you.